o tēnā koutou, a tēnā koutou, tēnā no tātou katoa. I call Jo Hayes. Tēnā koe. Ka tangi te tīti, ka tangi te kākā, ka tangi hoki koe. E kuru mā e kui mā, e rauranga tira mā, o ngā hapu, me ngā whāna o Ngāti Pōrau, tēnā koutou, ngā mai hari mai, ki te rā whakahirahira. Ko wai au, kei te mokopona o te awa, kei te mokopona au o te awa o Waiopu, te maunga o Hukurangi, te whare o Awatere, me hine rupe, me te tangata Tararangi. Ko rangi huna me apanui kōnea o ku whāu tūpuna. Ko paikea apanui, ko paikea āriki apanui tōku pāpā, ko Joanne, ko whāu apanui Hayes tōku e ngoa. Te mana whakawā, I too want to acknowledge the late Dr. Aperana Mahuika, or Api, Uncle Api, as we all know him. A great leader of Ngāti Parau, a man who only wore Ngāti Parau tinted glasses and never apologised for it, and a man who, among other attributes, led the claims process for Ngāti Parau. And as I heard from the previous speaker about the tinted glasses of those from Ngāti Parau, I too was brought up thinking that there was only one iwi, and that iwi was Ngāti Porau. I too was brought up with all of those, those ideas, even though it wasn't back on the coast of Te Araroa, it was in a little place in the centre of the Manawatū. That is what I was brought up with, that every Māori in the whole of New Zealand was Ngāti Porau. So you can imagine my shock when I found out, hello, that might not be the case. I want to um, acknowledge the opia of Ngāti Parau, some of them that have come here today. Um, we're here in 2008, and so today is a journey that's just about at their end of the process that we're going through for the bill to reach its royal assent. I want to acknowledge um, Herawini, Herawini Parata, sitting up in the um, gallery today. Um, I've known um, Herawini for quite some time, obviously uh, the Honourable Heke Parata's brother, but also Herawini was my brother's boss at, um, at uh, Tamata, at, at Tamata, at, Tamata um, at, at the Māori, big Māori, um, Mātatini, that's it, Tamatatini, in the head, needed to, needed to keep going. Um, while I was not at uh, Parliament during the time in 2008 when the iwi came here to sign, their, um, to sign their agreement, I can only imagine the political uproar that was going on as the bill was being negotiated. It was time when the ill-fated foreshore and seabed legislation had been debated and passed by the former Labor government, a bill that instantly marginalised iwi Māori, customary rights to the moana, and for some non-Māori as well. A time where that saw the birth of the first and only independent Māori political party emerge onto the political scene, the Māori Party. Yes, to mana whakawā, they were rocky times back then. And as I look around the House, I see these political parties that drove that divisive piece of legislation sitting here and standing and moving forward with this piece of legislation. And we cannot forget the work of the National Party when it came in in 2008 and repealed the Foreshore and Seabed Act of 2004 through the Marine and Coastal Area Takutai Moana Bill. But I digress to Mana Whakawa, because today we're here to celebrate the first reading of the Ngā Rohe Moana o Ngā Hapu o Ngāti Parau Bill. A bill, in essence, that gives effect to the deed of agreement between Ngā Hapu o Ngāti Parau and the Crown in relation to Ngā Rohe Moana, o Ngā Hapu o Ngāti Parau. A bill that seeks to achieve outcomes, outcomes that recognise the unbroken, inalienable and enduring mana of the hapu of Ngāti Parau in relation to Ngā Rohe Moana, which is held and exercised as a collective right to provide a legal mechanism that supports the expression and protection of the mana of the hapu of Ngāti Parau, generally, and in those specific areas where customary marine title rights are recognised. 
an outcome that will recognise that the Crown has a responsibility for public access in, on and over the common marine and coastal area and a role in regulating it. And finally, to provide certainty about the use and administration of Ngārohe Moana o Ngā Hapu o Ngā Tipurau. As many speakers have most probably already um, covered the eight mechanisms that was negotiated between Ngāti Purau and the Crown that requires legislative, um, legislation to have effect of those eight mechanisms um, to mana whakawā. And some of these eight mechanisms look at statutory overlay, that's a, a, a map outlining the uh, moana um, rohe for Ngāti Purau and um, relating to resource consent. It's about customary, fish, um, customary fishing practices, conservation mechanism, an environmental covenant, um, protected customary activities, wahitapu and wahitapu areas. It also looks at other areas of official geographic names or features, relationship instruments, as well as other customary marine title uh, mechanisms around permission rights, that's permission rights to be able to, um, for resource consent to actually um, um, approve people to go and harvest um, through the Resource Management Act. Customary fishing practices, extended mechanisms um, that will extend fisheries um, by allowing a hapu or Ngāti Purau to propose bylaws restricting or prohibiting fishing of sustainable uh, utilisation or cultural reasons in Cusbury Marine tidal areas. Again, environmental covenants and conservation processes. Also, areas around the Taonga Tuturu ownership and minerals ownership of that arohe uh, te mana whakawā. As I stand here, I look at this bill and it is an extraordinary bill. It is an extraordinary bill in the many ways that has been expressed in this House today. As a member of the Māori Affairs Select Committee, I look forward to receiving the bill into the Select Committee and to keep going through the processes, to hear submissions, to hear what the people have to say. And also to be able to, if we have the opportunity, to travel to the, to the East Coast to be able to be part and parcel of the whānau of Ngāti Purau as we go through that um, submissions process. Madam, um, Madam, Chair, uh, Madam Speaker, I just want to uh, close my contribution today um, by recognising um, my late father. Now, my late father was uh, named uh, Paikia. He was named after the ancestor Paikia. And so I close my contribution today by reciting our Ngāti Purau National Anthem, or our anthem, Paikia. And it goes like this. Uia mai koe, whakahua tia ake, tia ake, ko ai te whare nei e, ko te kane. Ko ai te teko teko, kei runga, ko Paikia, ko Paikia. Whakakau Paikia, whakakau he tipua, whakakau he tanifa, ka au Paikia ki ahuahu Paikia. Kei te whiti a koe, ko kahutia te rangi, me ai to ure ki te tamahine o te whironui aue nana i noho te roto o taha, tahe. Aue he koruru koe koro e. Ask and you will be told, what is the name of this house? It is the kane. Who is the car figure above it? It is paikia, it is paikia. Paikia emerges, a wizard emerges, a deep water prod prodigy is wading ashore. Paikia lands at Ahuahu. Ahu. Your identity is entwined with Kahutia Tirangi. You are, you are intimate with the daughter of Te Piro Nui, who settled at the Lake of Woman's Blood. Alas, you are now a figurehead, old one. I commend the bill to the House. Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Mika Whaiteri. Madam Speaker. No greater iwi has contributed to 